Championship Day in Minnesota High School Volleyball. Today on 12 Sports, the Class 3A Championship between the top seed, the Egan Wildcats, and the number two seed, the Champlain Park Rebels. Hello and welcome to XL Energy Center. John Jacobs along with Andy Gugersberg. And Andy, these teams met last year in the state semifinals. Egan wins on the way to a state championship. They met last month in a tournament. Champlain Park wins the only loss of the season for Egan. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that shocked, uh, that sent shockwaves throughout the entire state of Minnesota volleyball community. Egan rolled to a state title and graduated nobody. They were the odds on favorite start to finish. And when Champlin brought the upset at the Chaska tournament, uh, it was the buzz, and that's putting it mildly. These Wildcats, shocked on that day, have been playing really clean volleyball since that time. In this state tournament, they've played six sets, both sweeps to get to this championship. They've made nine attacking errors on the tournament, John. That's, that's unheard that's of. That's pretty good. That's unheard of. <laughs> Champlain Park uh, had a fight to get to even to the semifinals against Roseville on Thursday. Swept Hopkins played better, I thought, in the semifinal match. And here they are in their first ever state championship match. Egan's in their fourth straight. Yeah, it's a great day here. Uh, Champlain Park obviously looked very clean in that semifinal win. I was able to watch that uh, without any broadcasting duties. Kind of fun to just be a fan again. And uh, they, they, made, they made me a fan. They made me a believer. I've watched these guys with you a few times doing broadcasts. And it wasn't just the Sydney Hilly Show. They, pra they passed the ball around, got everybody involved. Uh, they were clicking on all cylinders yesterday. So we've televised three of the past four Champlain Park matches. In all three of those instances, they've been the favored team. And I've asked you, okay, what does the other team need to do to pull the upset? Today, even though the Rebels beat the Egan in that tournament, they're definitely the underdog today. What's the path to victory for Champlain Park? For Champlain Park, they got to dig the, they got to dig Bree Orr's emotional swings one or two times. Hilly's got to, and I don't know how many times we've said it in the last three broadcasts, Hilly's got to keep doing Hilly things. Uh, the role players got to keep balls off the floor until her or Schmidt or a couple of these other uh, big hitting uh, Champlain Park Rebels are able to put a ball down. Understand that there is so much talent on this Egan team. They got a D1 commit that won't see the floor today unless something changes from the normal lineup that Kathy Gillen's been using. Should be a good one though. Champlain Park and Egan, the winner, the state champion for 2016 in Class 3A. We'll take time out, come back, and start set one. Champlain Park, Egan, state volleyball next on 12 Sports. Connected community experience. It's at the core of what we do and it's what we deliver. Keep watching for a new way to think about and experience Channel 12 and Northwest Community Television. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Saturday afternoon in St. Paul for the Class 3A Volleyball Championship. The Rebels of Champlain Park and the Wildcats of Egan. Let's look at the starting lineups for each of these teams today. 31 and 2 Champlain Park against 30 and 1 Egan. For Champlain Park, Sydney Hilly, 65 kills in two matches so far in the state tournament. Emma Schmidt, Maria Claflin, Allie Miller, Caitlin Weimer, Skirch, and Izzy Ashburn are the two sophomores, and Jordan Stelpas, a freshman, rounding out their top seven in the rotation. And for the Egan Wildcats, number one seed and defending state 3A champions, McKenna Melville, Kennedy Orr, and Bree Orr, the sister setters, Taylor Olstead, a very good little barrel for Egan. Alyssa Doucette, Ann Wong, and Ellie Huseman, the rest of the starters for Kathy Gillen and Egan. Last of the championship day games today, Andy. Yeah, got to watch actually a lot of volleyball today. Heritage Christian 
played their full heads off uh, in a third place match, uh, jumping, dropping a little short. Here we see John Yonker in his sixth year. How many times he brought these guys, these Rebels to the state tournament? Three years in a row. Huh? Three years yeah. in a row. Done a great job. Kathy Gillen's done a great job with this Egan program, to say the least. Hall of Fame coach, a couple of state championships just in the last three years, fourth straight state tournament final appearance for her, and uh, what a great coach she has been to so many young ladies. Yeah, absolutely true. The conversation came up a few years ago uh, about great female coaches, and uh, athletic director Sandy Setter from Egan said, can we get rid of that female part? Because I'll put her up against any coach that's ever coached Maybe any sport, but especially volleyball here in the state of Minnesota. And absolutely true. Here we see the path to the state title. Uh, Egan, quick sweep of Grand Rapids to start the tournament and then turned around and knocked out a very talented Lakeville South team in a clean sweep as well. The third time they had played uh, the Cougars of Lakeville South. And those sets weren't close either, point-wise. No, no, Jenny Mosier, the key player for Lakeville South Cougars, hit negative on the match. And uh, talking with head coach Steve Willingham afterwards, he goes, in the second set, we had one hitter that hit positive. Egan was firing on all cylinders and uh, reading the set choices uh, that the Cougars were making and uh, had at least four hands in front of the hitter the whole time. Sydney Hilly, just unreal through two matches. 65 kills, eight errors, hitting at a above 400, eight kills a set. Everybody knows she's getting the ball and it doesn't matter. There's a lot of people, this is her first year being a full-time hitter. There's a lot of people that had arguments about her or Jazz Martin or Jenny Mosier. Talking with Mosier's coach yesterday, she, he, she, he told me that Jenny Mosier admits Sydney Hilly is the best outside hitter in the state of Minnesota this year. She is in rare air and that's putting it mildly. The kid is fun to watch and a great teammate. And her last high school match today. Along with Bree Orr and several others here today. And we are ready to go in set one. Caitlin Weimerskirch getting us underway. Ball outside for Bree Orr and the first point goes to Egan. Yeah, or elevates really nicely. We see a great swing here. Let's take another look. She goes high. That's in the seam of the block and down for a kill. Tough to defend. McKenna Melville back to serve for Egan. You can tell the Champlain Park fans are right behind Andy and I. Here's the attack by Hilly, dug up nicely by Olstead. Back set goes to Marissa Battendahl with all. Her hit is long, and Egan has the first two points. Taylor Olstead, we saw a dig that last ball. You noted in the game story about their semifinal match, how she dug the first four hits from Jenny Mosier yesterday and kind of set the tone defensively for her Egan team. Block here by Hilly gets Champlain Park its first point. Brianna Gore rotates in. She'll serve for the Rebels, trailing two to one. Well, right at the net on the overpass, Hilly tapping it over to tie it up. Great discipline there from Hilly. This ball passed really tight. Eighth grader Kennedy Orr goes up and tries to make a play on it, but Hilly, once that ball gets in the plane, goes up and redirects very well. Holstead to the front row, quick set, partially blocked by the Rebels. Outside, Hilly off Holstead, got it up. The Orr, swing across, down the line, and a point. And Wong with the kill for Egan. And Wong Jr., outside hitter for the Wildcats, trying to decide which Ivy League University she's going to attend, probably between Harvard and Yale. That's a great, smart swing from the straight-A student. Molstead serving. Dug up, here's Hilly attacking, and gets the kill. Off of Melville and out of play, and we're tied at three. Melville, one of the greatest liberos in the state, playing outside for the Wildcats this year, goes on her heels uh, and not able to make that dig. Big swing from Hilly again. Floats that serve across. Across off the hands of Gore. Kill for Ann Wong again. Egan back in front. Rior 
serves back row. Gore up to Ashburn, back down the line, a kill for Allie Miller. Great set choice there, as there is a monster block on the outside with Huseman and Orr, and they go and attack uh, Wong. Miller does a great job one-on-one. -on -one. She goes down the line for the kill. Or quick set, ball over, Ashburn, Gore keeps it alive, over by Claflin. Back set, Wong attacking, and Wong. Game from Park in front. Front row right, ball hit long again, where he tucked. Handy before the match, only nine hitting errors for Egan the first two days combined, two in a row here. Yeah, you maybe the pressure getting to Wong here, student section from Champlin kind of getting in her space a little bit, and it's a two-point lead for the Rebels here. Or quick set ball tapped over, sent back by Claflin. Or this time to a younger sister, Kennedy. And Claflin can't take that ball up on the... Missed pass and the point for Egan pulls the Wildcats back to within one. Hannah Hegwer entering the game to serve here for the Wildcats. Senior puts it in. Hilly. Ashburn and go back to Hilly in the middle. Point Egan. Great delay on the block here from the Wildcats as they uh, see the back row attack and actually get a little bit of patience. Nice job. Ashburn outside to Schmidt. Emma Schmidt who had some big points. Andy in the quarterfinal match against Roseville in set five coming up with one here with a kill. Great swing down the line. The scouting report says she goes more across, but if you're going to give her that much space, she'll take advantage of that line all day long. Nice swing from the sophomore outside. Ashburn serving it's seven to six. Ball delivered nicely cross court. McKenna Melville, junior, with the kill. Melville, second on the team in kills. The junior outside really sees the court well. Melville is uh, the daughter of head coach Kathy Gillen, so we have sisters and we have a mother daughter combination here for the Wildcats. Stalpus taking that ball up. Schmidt down the line, ball high up in the air. Brior, and it's point for Champlain Park. But miscommunication, misfeed there between Orr and Doucette gets uh, Egan head coach Kathy Gillen off the bench, and the Rebel fans know it. Olstead up to the front row, Doucette delivers her first attack and kill. That's a, uh, we call that a rip in our gym, and Doucette and Orr have been setting it to each other for a while there. She comes in off one leg in the A zone, and uh, the block not able to get to it. Ashburn outside, Sydney Hilly, Olstead gets to that ball, Kennedy Orr over to Bree Orr and over. Weimer skirts her run to the ball, Ashburn back out to Hilly. Comes to Bree Orr again off the block, point Egan. Big swing from the senior outside hitter there, the Iowa commit really teeing off off the block. Kennedy Orr up to Bree Orr, that's a good looking swing off the edge. Kennedy Orr serving. Ashburn back outside to Healy, across and down. Good spot, finding the middle of the court. Healy going at it a few different ways, getting some key points here for the Rebels. Weimer skirts with the serve, 9-9 score. Ball to the middle, and the Rebels can't keep it alive. Another kill for Doucette, Egan back in front. Doucette quiet her first time across the front row. They phoned her twice now on that same set, and she gets another kill. Ashburn back to Hilly, gets blocked. Dug back up by Ashburn. Again, Hilly with a swing, Olstead. Kennedy Orr cross. Weimer Skirch digging up the attack by Wong. Front row, and Battendall Vidal can't get much on that swing, and it's a point for Egan. John, like you, 
like you mentioned earlier, we've covered the three of the last four matches for the Rebels, and Sydney Hilly has hit that 32 out of serve receive at a 100% success rate up until that ball was blocked and touched. Good adjustment there by the Wildcats. I'm sure that beat them last time when they played them at Chaska. Recovered well there. Ashburn Hilly will tip it over the blockers this time. Olstead up in the air. Cross, dug up by Hilly. Another attack from Wong. They go back to Hilly, off the block. Dug up, Kennedy Orr. Three Orr will push it over. Ashburn, back to Hilly. Olstead to the middle as you separate dig by Schmidt. Over by Hilly, good rally here. Big swing and a kill. For Egan, that was a nice point, Andy, and the Wildcats end it. I love the fact that there was very little tipping going on here, and the point ends with Bree Orr going against a solo block. Hilly tries to take away part of the court, but Ashburn not able to get under the ball and dig it up. Melville serves. Ashburn to the middle. Hilly. Kill for Sydney Hilly. Over 600 kills this season for the senior. Yeah, Hilly does a really good job off her serve-receive route uh, coming in and hitting a two ball, getting away from the big block of Bree Orr. Back outside and across. Ashburn outside to Hilly. Got it down. Off the back line, another kill for Sydney Hilly and the Rebels back to within one. Look at this great pass. Ashburn puts a ball on a tee, and Hilly goes over the block and down into the deep, deep five. Tough ball to play. Wildcats scramble. Olstead gets it across. Miller, Ashburn, Hilly again. And we're tied at 12. Yeah, big swing there. We had a three-point run for the Wildcats after the 9-9 tie, and now a three-point run for the Rebels to tie it back up. Four, back throw off of Melville. Cross and over by Wong. Ashburn back to Hilly, off the block. Sydney Hilly coming alive here in set one to give her team a 13-12 lead. Big swing, this time the block there and closed, and Hilly realizing that off the edge of the block and deep behind Olstead's gonna score, and it does there. Point lead. Gore, line drive serve. All set outside to Bree Orr. Point, Egan, tying it back up. Good action there as Doucette runs the uh, gap set and doesn't get the ball, but it's a great decision to move the block away. Hilly not able to go one-on-one -on -one and take care of that ball against Orr. Ashburn, Hilly again, tips it across. Olsted scrambles for it, and back over by Brior. Hilly, deep back, Melville. Right side attack, dug up by Gore. Hilly again, the sun gets blocked. Point for Egan. Look at it, Ellie Huseman that got up for that block. Ellie Huseman, the sophomore, does a really nice job of closing next to Bree Orr, and both, been both yeah. sets of hands getting across the net, making it very difficult for Hilly. Great hustle by the Rebels. Kennedy Orr across for Wong off Weimer's skirt, and another Egan point. First time through the front row, Wong went almost blind the entire time. The block adjusts there, and she goes cross court, and Weimer's skirt's not able to make the play. Ashburn back to Hilly again. Great dig by Melville at the net. Rebels scrambling a little bit. Hilly getting across. Melville again handling it. Kennedy Orr back for Brio gets blocked. Point Champlain Park. The look on Sydney Hilly's face. She's in another space right now. Great block. Miller will get half a block credit there, but that was all Hilly. Big point. Rebels back to within one. Hilly serving. Off Olstead, front row, back to Bree Orr from Kennedy Orr, dug up by Ashburn. Schmidt, cross court, Melville has it to the net, tapped back over by Egan. Now it comes to Schmidt, she gets blocked without a play. Tied at 15. Schmidt does a really good job here taking that ball. She comes in to take care of the overpass. Transitions, we call it an inside-out approach line. She only has off the edge of the block there, and she uses it well. I'm in love with 
Ashburn all the way across to Schmidt, down the line off Olstead. Big swing there again from Schmidt. I think, the, I think uh, the Wildcats thought they could take a sigh of relief when Hilly got to the back row, but Schmidt reminding them that she's a pretty darn talented player as well. They lead by one. Three-point run for Champlin Park to put them back in front. Ashburn Miller, Hilly will tap it over. Melville back across, tough ball. Rior got to it though. Back over to Schmidt, gets blocked back and down by Huseman. Nice play at the net there by the Wildcats. Good hustle on both sides as Rebels and Wildcats all over the floor on that play. 16-16, everything we hoped it would be here early in set one. Ashburn gets blocked. Or excuse me, Schmidt gets blocked off the Ashburn set again, Huseman. Huseman yeah. got that ball with her triceps, John. She's so far across the net, it was above or below her elbows was what contacted the ball. Big blocker. Back this time to Miller. Melville across, hit that, the net. Down another point for Egan. Now a two-point Wildcats lead at 18-16. Eighth grader Kennedy Orr with a very smart, timely tip there. Ashburn to Schmidt. Got it in. Rebels back to within a point. We'll take another look at this. Good out of system ball. Schmidt knows that there's a double block there, and she goes over the block, a little bit of off speed, and drops it in just in front of the end line. Rebels within one. Here's Brior with a swing off the block. Gore, Ashburn back to Hilly. Cross handled by Brior. Olstead, no, it's Melville coming over. Now Kennedy Orr swings it over. Ashburn, Schmidt, off of Melville and out of play. Game ball touch for the Rebel faithful. Big outside set here. Schmidt there goes cross court. Melville does a really nice job making an adjustment, but the ball is so sharp cross, she's not able to make a dig and keep it in play. Tie ball game. To the middle this time, Ashburn gets up for the block with Claflin to put Champlin Park back in front. Ashburn listed at 5'10". Compared to the rest of the players on this court right now, she looks small, but she plays big enough right there for the block. Miller serves, Olstead. Rior across, Kennedy Orr. Back row Gore, Ashburn across to Schmidt. Holstead digs it up. Wong will push it over. Ashburn to Schmidt over the blockers. Wildcats dig it up, back row. Not violation. Looks like on Schmidt. 19-19, great rally, good body control on both sides of the court there. Up until the net violation, I guess, but. No timeouts needed yet by either coach in this first set. Know your Ball team, good stuff. Outside right, and that one out. Oh, no, we got one point Egan. Cross court swing here from Melville, and, and it, uh, it was close. It was really close. We'll now get a timeout. You know, here we are, John, sitting early in set one. It is 20 to 19. Egan up by one at late in set one. If we go back to the one time these two teams have met before, let me just give you the scores where Champlin beat Egan. 23-25, 25-23, and in the third set, best two out of three, 19-17, Champlin wins. If we thought we were gonna get a sweep either way, we came to the wrong match. This is everything we looked for. Great, clean volleyball on both sides. Not a lot of errors. We saw a couple errors from Wong early in the set. Uh, I don't, I can't think of back-to-back -back errors from the Rebels. It's been a lot of good, clean kills. The type of volleyball we're looking for for a state championship here in Class 3A. No service errors yet. Like you said, normally this late in the set we're going to have some timeouts, but this was the yeah. first one here at the 39th point in the in the set one. Players all over the place getting looked at by big colleges are committing. We know about Sydney Hilly, uh, the heir apparent to the Wisconsin throne, uh, gonna replace Lauren Carlini next year and look to be a four-year starter for them. Hegworth serving for Egan. 
Ashburn will go to Schmidt. Dug up by Briora right back across. Ashburn back to Claflin this time. Olstead with a dig. Ashburn over to Hilly. Received by Melville. Brior back, swing across, gets blocked by Schmidt. Olstead will tap it over. Ashburn, Schmidt gets blocked. Weimer skirts with the dig. I'll go to Schmidt again, blocked again, and a point for Egan. Another long rally, lots of great net play from both the Wildcats and the Rebels. Ending in a block, Schmidt trying to go across and like go cross court there, but Huseman drops her left hand in for a two point Wildcat lead. Ashburn outside to Schmidt that time. Gets through the block and finds court for a point. Melville thought that ball went outside uh, of her hands and out of bounds, but Schmidt does a great job swinging around her and down. Big swing, good point for the Champlain Park Rebels. Ashburn gets the ball across. Here's the semi outside. Kennedy Orr dug up. Ashburn, Stalpis will put it over. Olstead, Kennedy Orr gets blocked. Sends it back for the Wildcats. Sends Ashburn to Stalpis. Tried to catch the line that didn't. Point for Egan. 22-20 Wildcats. Champlain Park bench looking for a four touch call as Kennedy Orr's attack goes below the tape, but no call made. Uh, and, and the rally ends with another Egan point. Ashburn to Claflin. Outside, dug up by Ashburn. Weimer Skirch. Give it to Schmidt, too much on that. Attack air, 23-20. Look for another timeout here, and that's what we'll get from John Yunker. Uh, lots of great volleyball players, like we were talking about at the end of that last timeout. Uh, Egan has so many talented players. They've got a D1 commit on the bench and Allie Murphy, North Dakota State commit. They've got Bree Orr, who's going to be going to Iowa. They've got Central Missouri commit, um, or excuse me, Missouri State commit, Alyssa Doucette. Uh, Taylor Olsted, the final libero, is going to go play for Chad Bregelman at uh, St. Cloud State University. Um, Melville going to Central Florida, going to play for Todd Dagenet. Uh, Huseman is getting looked at by both the Pac-12 and Notre Dame. And uh, Kennedy Orr, the fine eighth grader, getting looked at by just about every everybody and uh, is trying to make a decision between about three or four programs. Um, with that kind of talent coming at you, rotation after rotation after rotation, weathering the storm is one thing. Sydney Hilly and uh, em, is it Emma Schmidt? Yes, Emma Schmidt doing a great job getting big swings so far. They're within three looking to get a side out here. Let's go Rebels! Let's go Rebels! Let's go up to Stalpus, gets blocked. Hilly. Go to Stalpis, off the blocker, sent deep, great ball by Bree Orr. Bree Orr seeing the fact that the uh, Champlain Park Rebels were in a great cover position. She takes that ball and throws it deep cross. That might have been going out, but uh, Hilly making the effort just in case. Set point here for the Wildcats. Ashburn back to Schmidt wide, and Egan takes set one, 25 to 20. Everything pretty smooth there up until about 18s, and then some errors late here, and it ends with a attack error. Uh, big block set up from Egan. Schmidt tries to go over it, and misses wide to end set one. We'll take time out. We'll come back for Class 3A Championship Volleyball from the XL Energy Center next on 12 Sports. Connected community experience, it's at the core of what we do and it's what we deliver. Keep watching for a new way to think about and experience Channel 12 and Northwest Community Television. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities and this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat.
Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. With Andy Gugisberg, I'm John Jacobson. 25-20. Tom C. Egan taking set one against number two seed, Champlin Park, Andy. And as we look at the stat sheet, it's everything we thought it was going to be. The uh, defense telling the story of set one. Champlin Park, 22 digs and four, uh, excuse me, two blocks uh, by a combined uh, four players there. Uh, and for Egan, 29 digs and four blocks. That's Eight blocks. That's great defensive yeah. effort there from both sides of the net. Look for, uh, and that's why the hitting percentages are down. We talked about there was a grand total of nine errors in the first two matches for Egan. They have six here. Uh, Hilly, who hit over 400 in the first two matches, only hitting, only hitting 207 with eight kills. That's a stupid statement from a color commentary guy. She only had eight kills and hit 207 in one set, where she is the premier hitter for her team in the state final. Underway with set two on the first serve by Kennedy Orr. Haley getting it across. Kennedy Orr got to that ball. Here's Brior with the swing. Light dig up by Schmidt. Haley with the swing and the first point to Champlain Park. Haley gets on a line early here. She touches the ball high and at the last second changes where she wants to do. Let's take a look here. Good swing. Looks like she's going into that 5-6 seam and then drops the thumb and pops it to Olstead's left. Olstead left out to dry there. Weimer skirt serving. Comes to Brior. Missed, and it's 2 0 Rebels. Brior taking that ball down the line. In the previous meetings over the last four years between Orr and Hilly, uh, Hilly has gotten the upper hand. Uh, Orr always been impressed with the way Hilly plays the game. Like to see clean volleyball continue from the Egan outside hitter. Ashburn to Hilly gets blocked. Weimer skirts will go back to Hilly. Off the blockers, back row handled by Wong. Here's another swing and a kill for Brior. Brior does a really nice job there of getting cross court, going around the block of, uh, excuse me, of, uh, that was Miller there. Uh, and Weimer skirts not able to make the play. Points to Egan. Brior coming into Today's play with 346 kills on the season. Team high. Hilly over the blockers. Back they go to Wong. She gets blocked, and it's in for a point for the Rebels. Yeah, nice read there on the uh, block from Champlin Park as they're waiting in front of Wong, and she hits into four very eager hands of the Rebels as they're up three to one. Of course, serving. Kennedy Orr goes back to Wong. Schmidt high up in the air. Hilly have to tap it back to Olstead. Brior cross court and missed. Another hitting error for senior outside hitter setter Bree Orr. Uh, little sister Kennedy having a little communication there. What do you need with that ball? I'd like to get you another one here. It's a good looking set. I think Orr just trying to be a little too perfect. Wong pushing it, middle of the floor. Gore picked it up. Here's Hilly again, off the block, came right back, but Ashburn was there to play it for the Rebels. Wong gets blocked. Miller with the block for Champlin Park, and it's 5-1 Rebels. Really nice block here from Miller and Ashburn. Wong knows that there's gonna be four hands there. She's gotta hit around that block. Emma Slackio, senior, number 17, the end of the match now for Egan. First service there today on either side. Right there by Brianna Gore gives Egan its second point. Slacky, a senior, uh, gonna play her last match. She's gonna hang up her volleyball uniform after this. Uh, does a really nice job coming off the bench for either setter throughout the season for the Wildcats. Well, back to Orr. Hilly was ready for it. Hughes being out of ball across, but the Rebels handled that. Now here's Hilly. Over, back row Olstead. Slack you up front row. Hilly across. 
Taken by Melville. We'll go back to Wong again. She gets blocked. Olstead racing can't get to the ball. Point jump and Park. Good, good defense there. Great net play from the Wildcats. Let's take another look at this block. Wong straight into four hands again. I don't know what they're going to do there. They got to either get somebody going out of the back row, which would be Melville in this situation, or they need to get that ball off the net for Wong. Rebels all over the setting choices of the Wildcats, and they're up 6-2. to two. The tides have definitely turned here in set two. Errors that weren't happening on Egan's side, very prevalent, but they're not, un they're not hitting errors per se. Orr has two, but the other three points, three of the other four points that Champlin has are on stuff blocks. That's unheard of for five of the first six points to be quote-unquote hitting errors. Great defense from the Rebels. Good, strong play uh, from the uh, Champlin Park Rebels. Not just Hilly here, but great play along the net. Uh, Ashburn doing a great job blocking along with Miller. Hilly Suring with her team ahead six to two. Ball hit across by Brior. Here's Ashburn setting up Schmidt. And missed a little long. No touch noticed by the line judges. Really good spot there, I thought, but uh, just misses wide. Good call, and then back to Brior. Here's Schmidt, gets blocked. Weimer skirt got it, back to Hilly into the net. Point for Egan. Six to four. Just like that, a quick little mini run here for the Wildcats. Hilly trying to get creative on that back row attack into the net. Ashburn Schmidt trying to catch line, did not. So a couple of hitting errors here for Champlain Park. Three in a row, brought Egan back to within one. Schmidt needs to recognize, or only an eighth grader, probably not real smart with her hands. I'd like to see her go off the edge there. A time into the middle of the net, John. 6-6. Six, six. John Yonker is going to get his team to the bench. 6-6, six, six, and just like that, it was 6-2. It was Timeout. Kathy Gillen riding the ship a little bit with the Wildcats. Uh, gets the side out in another three-point run. Four in a row for the Champlain Park Rebels. Right now we see John Yunker talking to Schmidt, trying to figure out, hey, how are we gonna put that ball in play? We saw it late in four. She had a little struggle in the in the quarterfinals, and, or excuse me, that was the section final. But we also know what she can do, as we saw in set five of the state quarterfinals against Roseville, where she took over and had about six kills in one set. Look for her to get the ball. Like I said, I'd like to see her go off the edge of the block of Orr, as she's not a very disciplined blocker, just an eighth grader. We mentioned it at the onset, but really nice crowd here for the Class 3A final all the way around our half of the Excel Energy Center. Looks like we got some stuff up in the suite level as well. Or serving back out of the timeout here. We're tied up at six. Schmidt across, handled back row, Melville. Back it comes, Kennedy Orr this time with a swing from Brior and gets the kill, and Egan's in front. Kennedy Orr elevates well and finds the seam of the block here. Melville to Brior to Kennedy Orr. There's the hole, as I think they were really paying a lot of attention to Huseman. Hilly to Schmidt. Out. Off the edge of the block. Yep. Point for Champlin Park, and we've tied at seven. Line judge over here to our right, noticing the touch call right away. Might have been screened, the line judge on our left. Great play there as they finally get out of that rotation. Miller serving, back row Melville. Rior across, Kennedy Orr this time. Her swing into the net. Champlin Park in front. Claflin does a really good job there, closing to Ashburn. They know that that's the advantage they're going to try and take. Uh, Kennedy Orr tries to swing through the block, doesn't quite get it there. Tough ball at the net. Huseman kept it alive for Egan. And they go back to Schmidt. Gets blocked. Point Egan. Nice block there from the Wildcats. A little bit predetermined. The uh, the pass kind of dictated. That's where that ball had to go. 
Orr and Huseman uh, stuffing that ball. Melville and Hilly kind of just hanging out, trying to figure out what's going on here with our discussion. Uh, if I was better at lip reading, I could probably give us a little detail. Hasn't been anything that's really causing much chaos. Wait a minute, we have a back row block called on Bree Orr, maybe? Let's take a look at it. There's a stuff block there. I think the play actually happened earlier uh, that, they, that the fault happened on. Uh, that's okay, that's a good look at that uh, replay again. Nice block from the Wildcats, but it will go to the Rebels. Quick side out there as Huseman swings cross court. 9-8, pulls Egan back to within one. Hagwer serving. Ashburn back, Claflin. Point for Egan. Tampa Park never able to get that ball clean and across. She's shaking. She knows you're not going to make Ashburn back row Olstead. Nice dig on the Schmidt attack. Billy Ashburn back to Schmidt. Off of Olstead into the floor. Good defensive effort there from the Wildcats again. Ball in the seam. Good swing here. Schmidt uncorks on a ball, and Olstead not able to bring it up. Ashburn serving and just a little long point for Egan. Ashburn trying to paint the edge there, uh, get everybody out of system. Huseman to serve. Ashburn to Stalpus. Ian with the point. Wait a minute. No, no, excuse me, Champlain Park. Champlain Park with the point. That ball slipped through the block and down for a Rebel point. And they are up by one. 11 10 with Schmidt serving. Holstead, Brior. Nice swing by Huseman. It's handled. Or by Doucette, rather. Now to Holstead. Back up, Melville. Ashburn gets the dig. Cross to Hilly and over. Brior back to Doucette. That's a point for Champlain Park. Four hits on Egan. Just like that. Rebels back up by two. Good long rally again here. We'll see the end of it. Uh, big swing there. No touch detected and uh, two point lead. Melville pushed it across. Caught the antenna. Point again for Champlain Parker up by three. Bree Orr pushing a tempo ball to the outside and Melville not able to get on it on time. Pushes that into the antenna. Wolstead, Bree Orr outside Melville. Hilly dug up, Ashburn back to Hilly, kill. Elevates so well for her 10th kill of the match. Let's take another look here. High inside set this time as she goes inside to play defensively. And uh, great sideline swing there. Nima Schmidt. Off the block on the attack from Melville. Here's Ashburn setting up Hilly. Off Olstead. Orr. Back. Swing by Melville. Dug up by Schmidt. Right side. Batten Dahl Vidal. Olstead with the dig. Back set. Melville. Ashburn digs. Hilly tip at the net. Bree Orr. Olstead. Cross to Kennedy Orr. Blocked off of Olstead. Out of play. And Champlain Park has its biggest lead today. And at five points at 15-10, timeout Egan. 15-10, Emma Schmidt playing great defense back there. We'll see the end of this rally. It's a tip over, Olstead's gonna try and play it up. Outside set to Melville, into the block. Covered well by Olstead, but not able to hook it back in. Earlier in the point, Schmidt playing what I call middle-middle defense, kind of hanging out, not going to some magical space where the ball should go. She just reads from the middle of the court and wears a couple balls up to the well that Ashburn can then set uh, pin to pin. And we have a five-point lead here for the Rebels in set two. 
great volleyball on the Rebel side. The only two mistakes that I'm even remembering are the two missed serves we had of this set. Everything else very clean from the Rebels. The Rebels fans have been busy, Andy. I've seen them a lot lately. Last, last Friday, I see them at state or section football. Champlin Park wins, last second win against Eastridge. They're at volleyball last Saturday against Wyzetta, three days here. And last night, they were at state football when they won in overtime against Rosemont. They've uh, been all around the Twin Cities. Point for Champlin Park. Net violation on the Wildcats. I noticed there was a large number of fans here for the semifinal. I wonder if they all just got on buses and went from volleyball over to football. Ball across. Sydney Healy. And we're back across and over by Doucette, Ashburn. Back out, Hilly's got to play it backwards. Long, three or back, Melville gets a much needed point for Egan to make it 16-11. Great run there from Schmidt at the service line, 16-11 now. We'll take a look at this, Bree Orr, good back set there, Hilly one-on-one, -on -one, and she goes off Hilly's block, does Melville and down for a kill. Back into the game, senior setter Emma Slackew. To the middle, Claflin gets blocked. Ashburn back to Hilly and gets it down for a point off of Melville. That's the third or fourth time I've seen Melville bang that ball into the ground after she gets used for a block. Typically, up ref's not gonna handle that very well. Gonna need to calm her down is either head coach Kathy Gillen or the up ref. In the middle and over the set. Taking the set from Slackview and gets the point. Take another look here. Here's that shake. She ran the rip earlier off one leg. It looks like a slide, but it's in front of the setter. The shake closer to the setter. The rip further out, both working really well. Melville floating the serve over Ashburn, setting the Hilly. Got it for a point. Oh, wow. Just a little bit of white. <laughs> That is a very high swing. See Hilly here on the two. She goes over the block. Olstead in perfect position to play almost any ball that any outside attacker in the state can hit. It goes over her head and lands in. The angles are so impressive from Hilly. Well, outside gets blocked. They'll go to Wong again. Back row. Off to Hilly, gets blocked. Handled by Wong, great play by Schmidt to get to that ball, Gore, and then over by Miller. The set gets blocked. Brior will push it over. Ashburn to Hilly, Olstead with a dig. Wong can't get to that one. That's some great defense by Champlin Park, earns them that point. You know, I'm just looking and remembering conversations I had with stack keepers. We had four cover balls in that rally, and those are not counted as digs. The dig totals will be off the chart here, a set and a half into this one, as great defensive effort from Champlin Park and Egan, but Champlin Park finishing the play. Outside or Weimer Skirch, Ashburn to Hilly. It's blocked back, Weimer Skirch. The back row, Schmidt too strong. 19-13, Egan's got some work to do, down six here. Bree Orr gets the first set of that rally and she tips, they go to Hilly, and uh, I thought that was gonna end the rally, but Orr recovers well and uh, gets a touch on it, point for Egan. We're in free ball time for Egan now. To the middle, dug up back row by Schmidt, to the net, Hilly's gotta back off, it gets it over and down. Great spot from Hilly there as she has absolutely no transition. She sucked in thinking she might have to take the second ball. So when it comes, she kind of goes backwards here. Take a look at this footwork and she's so smart, John. Puts that ball where nobody can touch it. She'll go back to serve, 20 to 13. Well, at the net, tough ball for Kennedy or to play. They're gonna say Schmidt reached over. Kennedy went up to try and make the play. Ball wasn't in the plane. The point will go to Egan. 20 to 14. Ball set across. Schmidt gets the kill. 
Schmidt so good in that 0-2 position there. Does a nice job taking that ball down the line. We'll take another look here. Or takes away, a little late actually getting out to the block. And uh, that's why line was so wide open. Olstead, Brie Orr down the line, not able to make a touch. Miller serves. Brie Orr to Kennedy Orr, cross court. Schmidt able to play it, gets the ball again. Olstead back row, Brie Orr back to Kennedy Orr. Miller's ready for it, Ashburn for Schmidt. Marshall block. Ball to the middle, pushed across by Huseman for a point. Kennedy Orr and Ellie Huseman played on the same club team this past year for Minnesota legend uh, Walt Weaver, and they found each other a lot during that season. There we see it again. It's an out-of-system ball. Huseman opens well and is able to tip that ball across. That one is long. And Egan at the point where they can't afford to trade, just trade points. No, absolutely not. It's, uh, it's, you can't give away points this late in the set. Hegward, the serving specialist now, uh, lost the DS role earlier in the, in the first set. Needs to keep herself on the floor by putting balls in play. Wow. Ball across to Melville, handled by Ashburn. Here's Stalpes, gets blocked. Point for Egan. Bree Orr going super athlete early on that rally. She elevates well and jumps at the ball high and outside. Melville on the block to end the rally. 22-16. Wildcats trail by six still. Huseman serving. Back row Hilly. Ashburn back, Lock out of play, point for Champlin Park. Yeah, Schmidt knows that there's a big block sitting in front of her there, and she goes off the edge. Kennedy Orr reaching outside her body where she's not that strong. There it is. Brior outside to Melville, gets blocked. Wong, Brior, pushes it over herself. Nice play by Brior to get the point. Or developing a court sense over the last couple of years. That's the second time we've seen her take a second ball over. Great cover here. Picked up. Look at this quick, nifty dump. Hilly. Ashburn to Hilly. Tipped by Egan, and we're at set point. There's Hilly on that 32. Not stopped again. 24-17. Rebels up. Looking to close out set two and make us at least get to watch four sets here right. in the Class 3A final. Kennedy Orr. The whistle, and there's set point. Double contact whistled on Orr. And Champlin Park has tied it up at one. Great set for the Rebels. Egan playing a little hesitant. We'll take a look at this last point. Great serve. Passes tight from Melville. Orr actually goes up and is in the net uh, to end the rally. But it was a double as well. Either or, either, either, I was going to say either or, but that's a totally different <laughs> discussion for this match, John. Here we are to set a piece. Great volleyball so far, John. We're tied up at one. We're back with more Class 3A Championship Volleyball in a moment. Connected community experience. It's at the core of what we do and it's what we deliver. Keep watching for a new way to think about and experience Channel 12 and Northwest Community Television. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. A redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. 
I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Champlin Park and Egan tied up one set apiece here in the championship match for Class 3A. Yeah, great volleyball again. I just, we literally just got the stat sheet and the Champlin Park Rebels hit .070 in set one and lost 25 to 20. Hit .070 again in set two and won 25-17. A lot of differences on the Egan side of the net as uh, the balls that were falling in set one, Champlin picking up here in set two and able to continue to put pressure on the Wildcats. Class 1A was won by Mayor Lutheran. Uh, Joel Grimsley been coaching there, coaching the Crusaders for I believe it's 23 years. Uh, her first trip to the state finals and of course her first win. Great job for her in Class 2A, Maple Lake led by Marty Keeble uh, in a clean sweep of Cinderella Story. Uh, I believe it was Concordia Academy Roseville. Concordia Academy taking out number one Kenyon Wanamingo yesterday and uh, falling after a barn burner yesterday, maybe running out of gas as they had a couple seniors that took a ton of swings uh, all day yesterday. Didn't quite have the gas to finish it out today. And uh, hats off to both Mayor Lutheran and Maple Lake as they are state champions in class 1A and 2A. Well, Egan wins that first set, but what did they learn about themselves in, in set two? What, what does the loss teach you to, to refocus here for set three? Well, I think they just tried a little bit too hard early and then hit pan, hit the panic button late, and uh, Champlin, no panic at all after losing set one. They came out and played clean into three or big swing. Handled by Schmidt, back row. Here's Hilly, cross. Well, Olstead just got that one dug up. Here's Brie Orr. down the line for a point. First point to Egan. Brie Orr gonna probably be a 5-1 setter for Iowa next year. She is also playing in her last high school match. The dominant attacker really getting after a few balls here in set two. Eight kills for her in two sets, 14 for Sydney Hilly and nine for Emma Schmidt. Olstead up, pushed over by Wong. Hilly to Ashburn, she'll go back to Sydney Hilly. Back row off of Melville. Olsted gets to it and over by Melville. Great hustle by Egan. Here's Claflin attacking from the middle. Point for Champlin Park. The Rebels seem to be attacking the left side block of Egan. We'll see it again here as they go into the middle. It's four hands coming up late. Wong not able to get across. Points to the Rebels. Here's Wong gets blocked. Miller up with Vettendahl Vidal with hands and Champlin Park takes the lead. It's Wong's fifth attacking error in a row. She had two kills and two errors in set one. Goes killless in two. Rior off the block. Here comes to Ashburn. Outside to Hilly. Rips it. Olstead there. Here's Wong swinging. Gets blocked. Weimer skirts up. Ashburn. Back to Hilly, she gets blocked. And back this time to Vattendahl, the doll. Over by Doucette, over by Hilly, Olstead. Kennedy or back, swing off of Miller. Ashburn back to Hilly. And a point finally for Champlin Park. Long rally, relentless pursuit, a few great defensive efforts. There we see the ball picked up. Miller finds it off the off her own block. Hilly goes off the block and out of bounds as Olsted not able to run that one down. 3-1 Rebel lead. Weimer Skirch. Over, ball hit across. Nicely played by the Eden Wildcats for a point. Yeah, you saw right there, Weimer Skirch knew it was coming. A little frustrated with herself as she's not able to put that, pick that ball up. Passes up, good set here, back to Hilly, off the edge of the block, counted as a point. Champlin Park up, four to two. Into the game to serve, Bree Gore. Not to be confused with Bree or the setter <laughs> for the Egan Wildcats. We better enunciate very well, Gore. 
serving and off of Bree Orr. Olstead and Melville push it over for Egan. Ashburn outside, here's Hilly, gets blocked. Hughes been getting up. And the, the different faces we saw from the two players responsible for that block. Look here, that ball gets blocked and Orr turns around and stomps. Ellie Huseman just a couple simple claps like it's her job as a middle blocker. Missed serve there, untimely error from Bree Orr. Five three as Hilly will go back to serve. Her team leading by two or tied up a set apiece. Outside Kennedy Orr gets it down. Big swing from the eighth grader. Yeah, Hilly frustrated with herself. As soon as she took a step away from that ball, she knew it had enough topspin to get that ball in. Great swing from Kennedy Orr on the left side. Ashburn back to Miller. Right dig by Bree Orr. Melville down the line for a point. Nice swing from the junior outside hitter as Olstead bump sets this ball all the way out to the pin and she goes over the block and down for a kill. Nice job, McKenna Melville, 5-5. Five -five. Pegware back in, serves it to Hilly. Ashburn over, gets it blocked right back at her. Weimerster's got a hand on it, but Rebels can't recover and Egan gets the point. And go down as a block for the Wildcats, but that definitely led on by Hegwar's serve. Hot tape, Weimer Skirch. Ashburn to Schmidt, back over. One more time for Schmidt, and in. Schmidt gets the repeat set there and takes care of the second one. Well, we mentioned earlier, take another look at this, Schmidt from Ashburn, uh, and, and we talked about Orr and, uh, oh, excuse me, Orr and Doucette playing together. Schmidt, Weimer Skirch, and Ashburn all played on a very successful uh, 15s team for Crossfire this past year. Tom Fugelstead taking that club to a whole new level. Schmidt again off the block. No touch called. Point for Egan. Wildcats back up by a one with Huseman to serve. Ashburn gets it up, ball hit long. Schmidt helps give Egan a two-point lead. Schmidt has now taken, uh, where are we at here? Sorry, my stat sheets are all over me. Schmidt has now taken 35 swings. Maybe the uh, sophomore getting a little gas. We see a tip there. Now with the pace, we've seen the rest of the match from her. Great dig by Hilly on the ball by Melville. Ashburn's going to go back to Claflin. Right to Claflin at the net, and he will play that down off the pass up too far by Wong. Yeah, good swing here from Claflin. Dug over, and Claflin takes care of the second opportunity there. We lost the ball under the scorer's table to our left, and is the Ashburn editor Get another one from the scoring table. Now we're back underway. Do set back row Hilly. Ashburn and over by Schmidt. Here's Brior setting it for Melville. Dig by Ashburn. Here's Stalpus. The front row ball blocked by Claflin. By the senior, Maria Claflin. Couple of big points in a row. Yeah, nice job by her there. We'll take a look at this one. Olstead to Orr. And it looks like it was just, I think Doucette overran it. Uh, definitely Claflin ready to go make the play there. Weimer Skirts will get it to Sydney Hilly. Brior, Olstead across Melville. Got it down. Just past Hilly for a point. Egan back in front. Melville surgical with this placement. Olstead sets her up for the second time in about six points. That's a great ball down the line, or down on the end line, excuse me. Ashburn back in. Schmidt getting blocked by Brior. Brior and Doucette closing in on one there, and the Wildcats are up by two. 
Stelpis, Ashburn, back to Stelpis, gets blocked. It's going to go against Ashburn, I believe, on the lift. Not quite sure that this is the time for that call, John, but the lift will be called. Let's see how Ashburn responds. Well, late Hilly getting the ball, but does, and Stelpis putting it nicely off the blockers, and Champlain Park ends the mini run by Egan. They're back to within two. Temple ball to Stelpis as Melville expecting a higher ball does not get her hands across. Back to serve is Schmidt. Off of Melville, Olstead, and Melville hit it across. Ashburn setting up Hilly. Kill Rebels, 11 to 10. Nice swing again here. Look at this ball go down. Uh, Wong in a good spot to get a touch on it, but doesn't create a good enough angle or tries to make a second touch, but to no avail. Rior gets blocked. Kennedy Orr set it for Melville and Wong. Melville is, is feast or famine right now. She's had a couple really good swings, but that's a pretty bad miss to tie the game back up at 11 here in set three. Three in a row for the Rebels as Schmidt serves. Three or. Champlain Park takes care of that, and they're in front. Olstead's platform on this pass was just perfect. Set goes outside, and unfortunately, we're in a situation where we're trying to do too much again. 12-11 lead for the Rebels. Schmidt to serve. Melville up to Kennedy Orr. Claflin again, big in the middle. In the right spot for Champlain Park, and they're up by two. Claflin owning the net one-on-one -on -one there as Doucette stuffed back home. Back to Melville, gets blocked. Olstead has a race to the ball. Kennedy Orr to Bree Orr. Ashburn will set out to Kelly off the tape, down off Egan. It's a 6-0 for Champlain Park and a timeout for Egan. Yeah, when, when Hilly's in rhythm, great things happen. But we haven't had to call her name very much here in the set as Claflin has owned the net for the last six or seven points. 14-11 lead for Champlain Park. Everything going their way after a tight set one loss. They kind of took over in two and have extended that lead here. Kathy Gillen and the Egan Wildcats, the year-long favorite number one team from the middle of August to this day uh, in the coaches' poll kind of in trouble. Maybe maybe not used to getting this pushback uh, earlier in the year. Now here they are in the last match of the year for five. Is it five? It is five seniors on this Egan Wildcat team knowing that it's their last chance to play together. Like to see them play a little bit cleaner. And for the Rebels, everybody doing a great job. It's not just the Sydney Hilly Show. It's Emma Schmidt. It's Coughlin. It's Bottendahl Vidal. It's Ashburn. It's Weimer Skirts. It's for one one rotation, it's Jordan Stalpis. It's a little bit of everybody, and we're back to live volleyball, John. Egan on the year, and he's just played one match this year that's gone five sets. That was against Lakeville South about a month ago. Egan prevailed, but they have not been pushed much this year. Absolutely true, and that match was one for the record books. Uh, actually, literally saying that, Jenny Mosier, the UCLA commit, uh, Registered 49 kills on 118 swings in that match, setting a Minnesota State High School League record that I thought Hilly might break in, set in our first match here this weekend. Weimer skirts back to Hilly. Back up front row, tack and hit wide by the Wildcats. Champlain Park lets Egan just get one point and then ends that. Or trying to go cross court again. I'd like to see her challenge the hilly block a little bit instead of missing wide on that sideline, which she's done four or five times. Tight ball, great athletic move by Orr. Ashburn back to Hilly. Missed in the point for Egan. Big swing from Hilly there looking for that line and just misses wide. 15-13. Ashburn over by Hilly. Big swing, Wong with the point. 
Wong with her first kill since halfway through set one. And uh, it couldn't have come at a better time for the Wildcats. Kennedy Orr putting that ball in a great space and it's in the seam. Ashburn to Hilly. Great Melville play. getting a hand on that ball and over by Wong. Go back out to number two again. There's the kill for Sydney Hilly. 2016 Miss Baden Volleyball Player of the Year, Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year, first team All-American, definitely first team All-State, All-Tournament. She's done it all and she's trying to do it again here. So a little bit long by Brianna Gore. You know, we've talked about it more than a few times that she'll be a setter in college. My son asked me, any chance that the let her hit it all because she's so good at it. She, a service error by Brior. She's a very dynamic attacker at the high school level. And yeah. don't get me wrong, she could do some good things in college. But the block that you see every day in the Big Ten averages 10-4, 10-5. And it's a lot tougher to score there. I'm not saying she couldn't have a successful career. But to watch her set and the hitters that she'll have around her, Kelly Sheffield's not going to need her to do much attacking during her tenure as a Badger. Kennedy Orr gets the kill for Egan. And the Wildcats pull back to within one. Hagware serving. Loads it to Weimer Skirch. Ashburn will set up Schmidt. We are back to Melville. Tough play at the net. Ashburn and bumped over by Miller. And there's the tie score. 17 all. Nice swing there from Melville as she finds space uh, in between the block and then in between Hilly and Gore. Hilly just screaming at her team as gently as she can. Hey, we're okay. We're okay. Everybody relax. Ashburn racing to the ball and pushed deep by Weimerskirch. Over. Weimerskirch gets a hand on that ball by Melville. Here's Kennedy Orr. Back row Hilly. Ashburn to Schmidt, off the blockers, Olstead's ready for it. Back to Melville, not time to get down again. Played well here in the second set, and the Wildcats team lead by one. Melville seeing that Weimer skirt still at the 10 foot line, and Hilly sitting in the six, uh, that five six seam wide open, and she finds it there for the kill and the Egan Wildcat lead. Uh, all that momentum that was going through the end of set one and big into set two, uh, for Champlin Park, wiped away as the Egans come out and finally take the lead for the first time here in set three. Rebels looking to side out here. They got Hilly in the back row, which means they got Schmidt in the front row. I believe Ashburn's there as well. I'd like to see the slide go. Uh, set Schmidt if the block follows, and if it doesn't, maybe get Hilly the ball over the top out of the back row. Options on options. You know, we talked earlier about how Egan comes at you in droves. But the attackers for Champlin Park can score from just about anywhere. Uh, look for, I mean, if, if they're not going to pay enough attention to Ashburn, maybe she dumps this ball down for a kill as well. 18-17 lead. Hegler to serve here late in set three. Ashburn will set up Schmidt. Holstead, here's Brior. Melville gets blocked. There, and it's another point for Egan. Left called on Champlin Park. Wildcats by two. Melville so smart here is delaying her swing. She's actually hitting on the way down and the Rebel block is on the way down too. That's why they're back across the net. Let's go Rebels! Ashburn outside Let's go Rebels! the Schmidt. Kept deep by Kennedy Orr. Ashburn, Hilly across. Kennedy Orr with a kill. Hilly, that's the third ball she hasn't made a move on in the back row, hoping the ball goes out of bounds. She's going to have to lay out and keep that ball in play. 20 to 17 now, Egan up by three. Here's Hilly attacking, long, and the Wildcats lead by four. All Metro player having a little bit of struggle here. We got another timeout from Champlin Park. Look for John Yonker to calm the troops. 
They know how to play this game at a very high level. We've seen it all season. Here we'll take another look at this last point. Gore does a nice job passing the ball up to Ashburn. Hilly looking for the back line and misses. 21-17. Rebels need to go 2-1 to one here to come back and take set three. Look for a calm presence getting back out on the court. Look for Hilly to lead this team. I'd like to see a clean pass again. The routes are right. They just got to find a way to get that ball to the floor or off the edge of the block and down. Right now what they're doing is they're trying to be a little bit too fancy and go away from what got them to this point, John. And that doesn't work necessarily against Egan. No, no, absolutely right. Do, doing what got you here, it did get you to a victory in a three, a best of three match in Chaska about a month ago, but now with all the marbles on the line, we'll see if they're able to respond. Ashburn to Schmidt off Olstad. Big point for the Rebels, much needed. They trail still by three. Now 21-18. And finally an opportunity to exhale from the serve receive of Champlin Park. I love Gore's aggression there. There was two or three balls during that rally where she has stepped in front of other players. The junior DS really doing a nice job right now. Melville out of system. Ball hit down to the floor. 22-18. Egan three points away from capturing set three. Rior will get it back. Emma Huseman. Emma Huseman, excuse me, serving here for Egan. 22-18. Claflin swings and delivers a big kill. Claflin, a name we haven't said much over the last few matches, really coming alive here in the state final. I love this slide attack. She goes in between Orr and uh, Doucette. Ashburn serve, Olstead. At the net across. Egan point, 23-19. Eighth grader Kennedy Orr, cold as the other side of the pillow there, John. That's a big swing late in a set, and she puts it in. Ashburn will set up Claflin again. Yeah, why not? Why not? Claflin in this match so far, two sets in, uh, going to be hitting about 250 if I've got my math right. She's got three kills and a few blocks here just in set three. Schmidt serving. Ball outside to Brior with some power. Vatendal Vidal and Claflin knowing she's getting the ball. Wait a tick. And a net call? Oh no, just pointing to go get the ball. I thought I saw the upper up point towards Champlin's side like they were going to get to serve here. Set point for the Wildcats. Ashburn to Hilly. Keeps Champlin Park alive. 24-21. Sydney Hilly channeling her inner William Wallace saying, I'm not done yet. Big swing from the senior outside. Weimer skirts to serve. To the middle, we are, but Schmidt handled it. Ashburn to Hilly, back row off of Melville, Olstead, long across, and that is set point. Wong struggling early, coming alive late, gets the set point for the Egan Wildcats as they take set three, 25-21. Let's take a look at this whole rally. We go high ball in the middle, Schmidt wears it. High outside set, I believe. Yep, to Hilly, she sees an opening. Melville says no as she goes one arm stab. Olstead up to Wong, Wong down the line. Oh, picked up and not quite enough as there's great hustle from the Rebels, but not great ball touch as that ends the rally and the set, 25-21. Egan needs one more to be state champions once again. We'll come back, set four, from the XL Energy Center after this timeout. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. 
Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Great venue for high school sports, the state hockey tournament, wrestling, and more. And it's been terrific for volleyball, hasn't it, Andy? It absolutely has. There's a discussion amongst the uh, Minnesota State High School League and the Coaches Association to potentially go to a four-class system, which wouldn't affect the 3A very much at all. But it would, what it would affect is, what my, in my opinion, the integrity of the state tournament. Going to four classes, you couldn't do the format they have right now, which means you either have no consolation bracket or you've got to go to a different facility. And John, I lived down here for three days in November for the last 10 years, and I couldn't imagine seeing this level of volleyball be played in a different venue. We see the crowd here for the 3A final. I'm sure you've been here for a boys hockey final. Right. It's not quite that no. intensity, but you gotta love the intensity and the volume and the just joy on these kids' faces. Underway here in set four, and the first point goes to Egan. Melville and Doucette, or yeah, Melville and Doucette closing really well on the hilly block there. See Doucette all smiles as her and Melville figuring out the rhythm of Hilly. Look for her to attack, not to the pin. Nope, gonna have to. It'll be from Schmidt, back row. He's been got a hand on it over by Doucette. Weimer skirts back for Hilly. It's blocked back. Ashburn right side over by Claflin. Tipped over by Kennedy Orr for a point. 2-0 Egan. What did the Wildcats do? It looked for a time in the third set like it was going to be Champlain Park. They go up 2-1. Down the stretch, though, they steadied the shift, didn't they? They absolutely did. Their first touch got significantly better. Their offense got a little bit more diverse. As a result, the uh, Rebel block ran into problems trying to stop all of those attackers. Hilly threw the block on that one. Finally gets Champlain Park on the board. Two to one as Weimer skirts goes back to serve. That's wide on the serve by Champlin Park and it's 3-1 Egan. Melville almost kicking herself. She thought about playing that all the way up until it bounced on the, uh, just wide of the sideline. Ashburn to Hilly who unloads. So disheartening for a digger like Long as she finally gets her platform under that big swing of Hilly and it's a net violation on the Egan Wildcats. 3-2, they lead. Four serves, back row handled by Melville. Here's Bree Orr, dug up by Schmidt. Hilly across Long, takes it to Bree Orr. Tough play at the net, but able to Get the job done. Here's Hilly getting blocked. Ashburn back to Hilly. And played by Schmidt. That might have gone out. Here's Hilly again. Attacks for a point. Hilly finds the edge of the block again there. Great hustle play from the Rebels. Run down by Schmidt. Good bump set from Ashburn. Hilly off the edge of the block and down. Tied up 3-3. Kennedy Orr across to Brior. 
Weimerskirch gets a hand on it over by Hilly. Kennedy Orr back to do set. Tipped by Champlin Park. Rebels didn't think so. Let's take a look here on the replay. Good set. Uh, got the right hand of Ashburn, yeah. I believe. Good call from the up ref. Hilly swings and gets blocked. Three or. That is Hilly's 78th attack of the match here, and we're only in set four. Hilly got it off the blockers that time. Kennedy Orr back to Brior beautifully, dug up by Schmidt. Weimer Skirch, Gore's got to get it across and does. Kennedy Orr, Brior unloading. Great swing from the senior outside as they run the stack. Doucette comes in on the quick set. Brior over the top. The block was there, but not really disciplined as to where they were pressing. Back it comes, Hilly off of Melville. Point, Champlain Park. Great decision there as Ashburn tells Hilly to go to the right side. They haven't seen that attack from the All-Metro player, and uh, she gets the kill, and the Rebels back within two. All set back to Brior and down for a kill. 7-4 as Bree Orr getting another opportunity here and she goes down the line outside of Emma Schmidt's block and over uh, Weimerskirch. Floated across, Weimerskirch got a dive to the floor on that serve by Oldstead. Schmidt off the edge of the block, that's a great use from the sophomore outside. Big point for the Rebels, 7-5. Yeah, 8-4 in the fourth would be a tough spot to be down that early in a decisive set for them. They need to win here in order to force a fifth. Miller serve. Kennedy or to Melville. Hilly for Schmidt. And miss. Point Egan, 8-5. Schmidt, Schmidt takes a big swing there but misses just long. I like the aggression from the sophomore. Like to see her go after that ball again. Ashburn cross the dig Melville. Here's Kennedy Orr for the swing. Ashburn to Schmidt again off the blockers. Olstead handles that across. Kennedy Orr and Wong Long. Wong misfire right there as the uh, junior outside hitter sees the block, tries to find the edge and misses. Ashburn. Cross on the serve, here's Brie Orr to Kennedy Orr. Ashburn to Stalpas. Dumped by Brie Orr. Ashburn in the middle, over by Claflin. Wide. Point Egan. Claflin saw an opening there. She has the sideline open as Brie Orr sucked in, and she just misses. Good idea there from Claflin. Hegwear serves. Weimer Skirch, Ashburn to Stalpus. Olstead diving to the floor for that. A cross by Kennedy Orr. Ashburn back to Schmidt. Great dig by Bree Orr. Kennedy Orr pushes it deep where Hilly gets to it. Here's Stalpus with a swing. Might have gone long, but it's off of Hegwear who played it. And it's Champlin Park point. Looked like that ball might have gone off Melville's block too there, but uh, no, that was. It was just Hegwer getting a touch on it. Good swing from uh, Stelpis to end the rally and get the Rebels back within two. 9-7 Egan. Brior outside, swinging down for a point. Melville. Nice swing there from Melville giving the Wildcats the three-point lead. Now being told by the up ref that she needs to stay on her side. Each ref handles that a little bit differently. It's a great stall tactic from the team that loses the point to kind of get some extra time. Brior across to Kennedy Orr. Back row handled by Schmidt at the net. And an Egan player in the net. 
point that, for Champlain Park. Deuce, or, yeah, Doucette there goes up, and the ball is clearly still on the Rebels' side, and Doucette goes up and touches it before Ashburn has a chance to run her offense. Weimer skirt serving Melville three or and a big swing from Doucette, but good up by Weimer skirt. Three or back this time to Melville. Hilly swings and gets a point. Hilly off speed there, drops the ball in front of the eighth grader. Or I like the positioning again. Late in her transition, she is she is a little gassed. You can tell she's not getting as deep in transition as she was earlier in the tournament. Outside, Melville gets blocked. Ashburn to Hilly over. Kennedy Orr is set and over by Brior. Back set to Ashburn. To Hilly who got blocked. They'll go back to her again. Pushes it deep. Swing and kill for Melville. Big swing from the junior outside hitter. Long rally, great dig by Wong here. Org one on one, good choice from the setter to go back. Melville takes care of it. Swing by Hilly over by Olstead, off Olstead. And now over by Kennedy Orr, or Bree Orr. And now it's Hilly getting set up again. Kennedy Orr, Bree Orr over, Ashburn. Weimer skirts to Hilly. Long. Well, he misses long to end another long rally. 12-9, Egan lead. Kennedy Orr. Short serve. Here's Hilly attacking. Gets blocked. Ashburn. Time will go right side. Schmidt. In the front row. Bree Orr. I caught the antenna on Andy. Yeah, great swing from Orr there, but she catches the antenna before it hits the block of Champlain Park. Point to the Rebels. Heads up job by all of the officiating crew to make sure they get that call right. 12-10. Rior. Back row now comes up to Hilly. Gets blocked and out. A momentum swing on the change of call might be everything Champlain Park needed as Hilly gets another kill, this time off the block of Melville and out of bounds. Gore serves deep, handled by Olstead. Kennedy Orr, here's three Orr and over. Ashburn over. Gore got to it late and hit it wide. Or trying to be a little bit too fancy there. Maybe we just want to put that ball in play and see if we can get a block touch uh, on the Egan attack 13-11 Wildcats. Floater over by Melville. Ashburn setting up Hilly, pushes it back row to Melville. He's Wong with a swing. It's a trap set from Orr here, and Wong swings on it but follows through into the middle of the net. Point Easy for, call. Yeah, point for Champlain Park to make it 13-12. Kennedy Orr over and getting a block in the middle is Miller blocking Doucette. Doucette tipping that ball directly into Miller. I think she was trying to go around it, but does not. Miller, great vision from the middle blocking position. Kelly serves Melville. It goes to Bree Orr. Nice dig by Gore. Over by Sidney Hilly. Kennedy Orr back to Bree Orr one more time. Another dig for Gore. Comes and off the block by Schmidt. Champlain Park has the lead. Nice job by Schmidt here, ending the long rally. Good set choice, and uh, the block is a little late, and Schmidt finds them going up, and it goes off and deep. 14-13 Rebel lead. Hilly serve just got it over. Back right side, Brior, the dig by Hilly. Schmidt attacking, off Olstead. It's deep. Schmidt on off of Brior. Brior here, and it's... Schmidt that got up, another point for the Rebels. 
Three or very tight right now as she's hitting uncomfortably. Like to see her just unleash on a couple balls and see what happens. Timeout from the Wildcats. Rebels rolling right now, 15-13, up in set four. First time out of this set. John, it's just been a great match. Lots of good swings. Let's take a look at this last point. We go high and outside, off the edge. Little Kennedy Orr, Melville's gonna try and set to Bree Orr. Bree trying to finish the play and does, but not the way she wanted. That's a ball where she's going outside in. We'd like to see her take that ball cross court, make Gore play it and see if they can get out of system and an easy ball or maybe a blockable ball back. Um, Everything running smooth. The big kids are taking big swings and the role players are doing an amazing job for both the Wildcats and the Rebels. We've called Claflin's name a lot. We've called Schmidt's name a lot. Uh, Ashburn definitely dealing the rock very, very well, uh, diversifying her offense. But when push comes to shove, we're getting Hilly the ball. And if she gets that one-on-one -on -one or that seam situation, she's ending rallies. If it's a double block, sometimes she goes off it. Otherwise, she at minimum makes things uncomfortable for the Wildcats. 15-13, Hilly in the back row and serving. Hilly, back row handled. Now it's Rior unloading. Or got to the floor to that one. Olstead calls it up. Kennedy Orr back to Brior gets the kill. So good play by the senior to get Egan a point. Yeah, repeat that hitter. She's a senior captain, leads the team in kills. You want to give her the ball. And for some reason, I believe it was Miller didn't stay with her. We want to see a double block in front of Bree uh, Bre Orr the whole time. Yes. Yes. Ashburn yes. over. Bree Orr unloading yeah, high up in the air. Ashburn setting up Schmidt and hit long. They're tied at 15. No touch detected. Assistant coach Rebecca Zanevsky definitely thought there was one. Very unhappy is the assistant coach up off her chair. Ball comes back and hit up in the air. Ball tapped up in the air. As Schmidt gets it back. Weimer skirts able to handle that off the floor. Hilly puts it across. Melville with the dig. Brior. Gore again. Good defense. Set up Wong over. Ashburn. There's Schmidt. Melville's there again. Here's Wong. Missed. Point Champlain Park. Good point. Good long rally. I'd love to see. We're going to see the end of it here as Wong misses wide. Gore with the rally extender. Great defensive effort from her as Bree Orr uncorked on a ball and Gore wore it well. Rior gets the kill. And there you saw Miller in and serving and playing that right back defensive position that Gore typically plays. That's a great swing from Orr and she finds the sideline. She goes back to serve here. Ashburn back and across. Rior digs it up. And the Kennedy Orr trying to get it at the net and did get it across. Ashburn to Schmidt. Back to her. Hilly unloading for the kill. Ashburn's back row set to Hilly has gotten consistently better throughout this tournament. She's in rhythm right now, hitting downhill, and she puts that ball in front of a split backcourt uh, for the lead for Champlin Park. 17-16 Rebels. Rior to Kennedy R. Locked out of play, we're tied again. Hey, where to serve. Tough play there. I didn't think that that ball cleared the plane of the net, but the uh, touch call was made and Hegler will serve. Ball blocked back and the Rebels can't recover. Good block by Doucette or Huseman again, able to get up. Huseman gets the block, timeout Champlain Park. Yeah, we'll take a look at this last point. Stelp is kind of put in a trap set situation. It's inside, she's expecting the ball to the pin. And as a result, Melville and Huseman in a great spot to just clamp down on that ball and uh, take the lead 18-17. John, we're getting everything we're expecting here for a Class 3A final. Again, we'll see that block covered there. 
Melville, really, really good eyes from the junior outside hitter who does not block the majority of the season, but head coach Kathy Gillen recognizing they need her experience on all, uh, on all three contacts as she is the backup setter if for some reason whichever or is in the back row plays the first ball and Melville is back there, she has taken every second contact. Uh, Hegward going to serve again here. The senior DS comes in, serves and leaves. She's done a really nice job these last couple sets of putting pressure on the Rebels. Ashburn back to Schmidt, gets blocked. Yeah, point full for Egan. Lift called on Champlin Park. Good big block there from the Wildcats as the Rebels in a good spot to cover, but the ball kind of sits. How good are they on the block? I mean, they've been outstanding. They've been outstanding. Their eyes are great. They kind of serve and uh, attack balls to take people out of system. Great play by Brior. It's the uh, fourth time she's pushed that ball to the deep corner, and I believe her second kill. Tip from Hilly, read nicely there by Bree Orr, and a timeout from John Yunker as frustration starting to be seen on the faces of the Rebel players. These seniors, there's one, uh, there's five of them, is that right, John? I see five seniors on the Rebel roster. They, they're thinking this may be it. They're start, that thought starts to enter your mind here at the X in the Class 3A final. Um, look for great volleyball. We haven't seen errors again this set. It's been clean volleyball, but when both teams play clean, Egan just able to out-athlete Champlin a little bit with, uh, with their six very strong and dynamic attackers. Peg, we're still serving here. Ball outside to Stelpus, pushed deep by Brior, same spot again. Four points to a championship for the Wildcats. Well, coaching, I, I, the statement I'll use in these situations is sometimes we bring a knife to a gunfight. There we see Stelpus tipping the ball and uh, Egan Wildcats on all eight cylinders unloading. Hilly. Back row, Olstead. Free or outside, Kennedy or gets blocked. Champlin Park, a much needed point. Miller up at the net. And it's 21-18. Schmidt and Miller, or excuse me, Schmidt and Claflin, is that? No, it Claflin was Miller. Claflin and Miller. Claflin and Miller do a really nice job there clamping down on that ball. No, I think you're right. I think it was Schmidt and Claflin. Either way, a right. big block. Oh, and on. service error. That's a, that's a killer right there as Schmidt misses wide. Down a four point lead for Egan. Schmidt, Ashburn, Hilly and over. And the Orr over by Doucette. Right side over. Kennedy Orr, tough ball, but able to play it over. Ashburn to Hilly, gets blocked. Ashburn will go back to Sydney Hilly. This time we'll drop it over, Wong got it. Here's Melville trying to unroll him, a huge block. There it is, there's that look again. Hilly one-on-one, -on -one. Melville tries to go cross, and Hilly with the show take, as it looks like she's gonna take away line and then drop those hands in for a monster point for the Rebels. 22-19. Melville swings long. Rebels within two here. Great serve from Weimerskirch and Melville misses long, trying for the end line. Not the Rebels and their fans back into it on these last two. Melville again. This time Schmidt took it back row. Ashburn over by Hilly. Brior will set it for Descent. Weimerskirch back to Hilly. Brior outside Kennedy Orr and a point for Egan. Hilly got two sets in that rally and did not unload on either of them. The first one a push ball that Wong picks up easily. The second one a roll shot. And uh, if Hilly wants to extend this season for herself, she's going to have to take a bigger swing. Back set here. Vandal Vidal misses and it's match point. Vandal Oh, Vidal. is that Champlain Park's point? It is. We had a Egan player in the net. 
Gillen or... can't believe it. Re or a little anxious there. Life for the Rebels. We'll see what happens. 23-21, so down this by two. Gore getting that one just to sneak over. Brior dug up by Schmidt. Set to Hilly. All across. Kennedy Orr to Brior all the way across the net for a point. Now it is match point. Match point here as Brie Orr comes inside on the three set play. and pushes that ball back cross body down on the sideline. Championship point for the Wildcats here. Melville trying to deliver another title for Egan. Sydney Hilly across. Backs at Brie Orr off Weimer Skirch. Ashburn to Hilly, it's long, and for the third time in four seasons, the Egan Wildcats are the Class 3A Volleyball Champions. Great fight from the Wildcats. Big time athletes making big time plays. There you see Bree and Kennedy Orr embracing, crying. Kennedy so happy to win this for big sister Bree, her third state title. Kennedy Orr's second, and she hasn't even gotten to high school yet. Big plays from the Wildcats down the stretch. Sydney Hilly, who carried this team all the way to a state championship match, gets the swing she's looking for and just misses long. John Yunker congratulating the rest of the Wildcats. Here we hear the Rebel fans. Thank you, seniors. Couldn't have said it better myself, John. Egan, five seniors in on a championship. E Champlain Park, five seniors. Three state tournaments. They got better each year. Fifth place two years ago. Third place last year. Second place last this year. Didn't end with a win like the last two seasons did. But a second place, a runner-up finish, and a great season for the Rebels. Can't say enough about how great both of these teams competed throughout the season. Uh, great composure for both teams. Hilly looks like she's in shock. The rest of the Rebels in tears. Hilly just has a difference about her right now. Just love the competitive nature. Not only her, the rest of the senior class for this Rebel team. One of the best, definitely the best win percentage of a senior class in the history of Champlain Park Volleyball. I mean, and talk about this, this senior group and, and what a job that, that they have done and elevate this program and really since John Yunker took over six years ago and, and to get to this point, obviously great disappointment, but a, a great season, great careers for uh, all of those girls. And how can, I can't say enough about Sydney Hilly and the volleyball that we've been able to enjoy or play here the last few years. Absolutely true. You can't say enough about Sydney Hilly. I'll tell you the scary thing, John. We talk about this senior class. We talk about Hilly, but there's some sophomores and freshmen doing some amazing things for the Rebels. I don't think they're done coming back to the Excel Energy Center. We could see this Rebel squad back again. A new leader for sure as Hilly will graduate, but a lot of great players coming back again. Egan, congratulations. Can't say enough about the Kathy Gillen and that. That's a terrific team. They don't make many mistakes. They block well. They hit well. They deserve to be state champions again. Absolutely true. They didn't graduate anybody off a team that won 3A last year. They bring them all back. A little bit of uh, rotation um, confusion early on in the season, but they right the ship. Three, four weeks ago, a lot of the coaches in the South Metro said that that team could lose when they put the match together that they did in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. They're in rare air right now. There's college teams that wouldn't want to play this Egan Wildcat team the way they're putting balls down and out digging their opponents. It's amazing to watch this team play. And it's been a great season of covering high school volleyball. What a terrific senior class Minnesota had this year. We got to see a lot of those girls uh, for the last three months, some here in the state tournament. And, uh, and now they move on to college, and we look forward to 2017. Before we leave, I got to share this stat. In a four-set match, there were 201 digs. 201 digs, 99 for Champlin and 102 for Egan. That's just stupid defense. <laughs> so impressive. Both of these teams throughout the entire season 
definitely won two all year. There was some rankings that may not agree with that, but I would have told you in August after watching Champlin play early, this is the team that's going to play with Egan for a state title, and that's what we got to see. Right now, the all-tournament team being announced. Six players from these two teams on the all-tournament team. Sydney Hilly and Izzy Ashburn from Champlin Park. And for Egan, McKenna Melville, Taylor Olstead, Bree Orr, and Alyssa Doucette all make the all-tournament team. Also, uh, Jazz Martin from Hopkins in our Channel 12 viewing area. Hats off to her as she makes the all-tournament as well. And there's a look at that group. Terrific group of players here who have played hard volleyball the last three days. And that is going to wrap things up here from the XL Energy Center. Congratulations to Egan and to Champlin Park on great seasons. The Wildcats ending up as state champions once again here in 2016. 25-21, the final score in set four for Andy Gugersberg and all of our crew. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 12's coverage of state volleyball this week, high school volleyball season, and we'll see you again next fall.